Alright, hey guys, my name is Colin Mosbruger. For those of you who don't know me, I've been in the business of making home haunts for seven years now. I'm owner operator of Cree Baker's Home Haunt here and now going off to college, so won't be running a haunt for a while. But I thought what I'd do is start making some series, trying to get knowledge out there about the science of haunts. Um, I think it would be hard to debate that haunted houses aren't both a mixture of art and science. And I feel like there's a ton of tutorials on the art side of things, but not as much knowledge out there for the general public of haunters about the science of it. And how do we really break these things down and categorize them. Because um, I think that's a very beneficial thing to do. So to start today, I'm going to be talking about categorizing haunts. And the different styles of haunts, how haunts vary from one another. How one haunted house can be one thing and one can be totally different and how do we categorize them so that it's easier to study them as we go forward. This is the categorization of haunted houses. I think it comes down to the three T's. First off, there's type of haunted house, there's theme, and then there's tone. Um, the first two, type and theme, we do know a lot about, they're openly discussed within the industry. Theme is, are you a butcher shop, an asylum, redneck themed, are you clowns? Um, I think this is pretty easy to understand, but it's another one of those crucial things. Type is an easy way to look at as a starting point. If you were coming into this business, what type of haunted house you want to make is a lot dependent on your location. But it can be the other way around if you go into it saying, I want to make a hayride, or I want to do a cornfield, then you go out and look for a farm. If you want to do something where you can highly control the lighting, the mood, the effects, do high detail set design, then you want to be looking for an indoor location. So type. There's the traditional haunted house. Indoors, built modularly, theatrically. There's outdoor options. There's a lot of different types of haunted houses out there um, that are easy to understand. This would also be where we would break down perhaps 3D haunts. Um, that's a different branch of haunts with the black light, chroma depth, that's one individual categorization. There's blackout. So the pitch black mazes, which could take on different themes, but again, they're all the same type. Um, 3D we most commonly see associated with the theme of clowns. So again, it's all about making the form fit the function of it. So there is some linkedness between them, but they're not entirely dependent. Type, there's all sorts of outdoor, cornfield, woods trails, all sorts of things like that. Um, so there's a lot of different types that can be incorporated. Theme, I think within the industry that's the one that people most understand for the most part, I think. And I don't really think it's something that has to be gone over because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so I'm going to leave that up, but I'm kind of going to box it off so I can draw more for tone, if that makes sense. Tone, I think, is the least thought out and understood question within the haunt industry. It's where we get to questions, especially within home haunters, like, well, is using gore a good thing? Um, questions where there really is no solid answer, and this is where haunts vary the most. I think tone can be described best along a spectrum. Type, it's your one or the other. You're an indoor haunt or you're an outdoor haunt. You're 3D or you're not. Um, but tone, it varies along a spectrum. Like if I were to ask you, um, how would you identify yourself politically? You wouldn't, it's not a choose one Democrat Republican. You fall somewhere along that political spectrum of left to right. And that's how tone works in haunted houses. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on this, looking at different haunts. And from what I've seen as a rough draft, I think tone comes on a two-way spectrum. So there's really two dimensions to tone. The first spectrum, which is up and down, could be either way, um, is realistic versus fantastical. The best way, I think, to describe it is realistic would be as it would happen if it did happen. We're not saying the cannibal butchers are killing everybody, but if people were to kill people, how would it go down? That's what 
highly realistic haunts do, is they focus on what would actually happen. Fantastical haunts, which are great too, um, and I'm of course not arguing one over the other, but fantastical haunts, they focus on bringing in out of the world elements, or I, I don't want to say out of this world because that always makes me think of aliens, but elements that wouldn't naturally happen and incorporating them to create new possibilities. Um, so we'll get more to that once we understand the other axis too. But this one is a little bit easier to understand. I think this is explicit versus implicit. So explicit haunts will tend to be the highly gory, highly shocking haunted attractions. Um, these are the ones that intend to reveal everything to you at some point. Maybe not right at the front, but they reveal to you what has happened. You see the bodies, the carcasses, everything there is it's all out. Um, and we're seeing a trend now, or at least I'm noticing, that um, a lot of the props sold are... Well, not a lot, but when you see the hanging bodies, like five years ago, if they were female, they would all have bras or full clothes even on, but now they're all exposed. That would be an indication of an explicit haunt. If there's frozen boob bodies hanging from the ceiling, that's explicit. Implicit is where you're going to get into the subtle and suggestive realms of haunts, and it leaves a lot to the imagination. Um, again, there's pros and cons to both sides, but implicit haunts will let you, the audience have more of a say in imagining what happens. So what are some examples of haunts that fall all over this spectrum? Um, I'm going to try and use ones that there's more information out about them in the industry so that it's easier to understand. Um, for the realistic and explicit side of things, I think one of my favorite haunts that fits into this category is 13th Gate in Baton Rouge. They have tons of pictures available on their Facebook. Um, if you go in, you can definitely see that these worlds are created to be as real as possible, with some exceptions. Um, I think as you get closer to the end of the haunt, fantasy kind of begins to take over, so it shifts down this way. But if you look at some of their haunt, their scenes, like um, they had an asylum for the longest time, and then they dismantled it, and in its place they put an old Victorian London Black Plague scene highly realistic, their swamp scenes highly realistic, their queue line is highly realistic, and it's explicit. It shows you the bodies, it shows you what's happening, and doesn't leave anything to imagination. Um, explicit and fantastical, I think probably the most well-known one here um, that fits really well in this category, like um, would be House of Torment. in Austin, and what they do, they're actually, at least their current location is in an old, um, I think, laser tag arena? I don't want to say that for sure, but it's in a bi-level building, so you go up ramps and you go all around, and their whole premise of their main haunt is an alien apocalypse, so it really, it shows you what happens. There's all these explicit monsters in the room, but then it brings in this, um, those monsters themselves are fantastical in nature. Um, I've tried for a really long time to come up with a good one that's um, realistic and implicit, and it's, it's kind of a hard category to fill. Um, haunts, for the most part, tend to, tend to steer towards explicit and realistic, or fantastical and implicit. Um, these two kind of have less in them, and this one I think is the hardest to fill, but the best sort of haunt I can think of there would be Necropolis 13, which is owned by the 13th Gate people right across the street, and it's built as a New Orleans style cemetery. Um, and really what it does is it just has all these tombs that you go through. Um, there's creatures that could be vampires, um, but it's hard to tell. It's so ambiguous because it's implicit with what it is, but it is highly realistic. It looks and feels like you're in a New Orleans cemetery, and it's very well done in that sense, um, but implicit with what you're seeing. Um, in the last corner, I think within the haunt industry, though I would say the Haunted Mansion really well, from Disney, really well exemplifies that, 
I think most well known within the industry that has the most information out there is Haunted Overload up in New England. Um, it's located out out of doors in the woods on a trail. Um, and their main one of the main things with them is they're giant um, oversized monsters and scarecrows that they build there. And so that satisfies the fantastical element, and then they really don't use much gore, so it's highly implicit. Um, so again, you can see here four very successful events. Well, I guess three if you pair those together. But all of these are successful events, um, and they all you vary greatly with tone. The thing with tone, too, I've noticed, and I've been traveling the haunted houses for four years now out of state, um, is that certain audience members tend to gravitate towards certain tones. I like, personally, the realistic and explicit ones, but my dad, who I travel with, he always, his favorites are always explicit, fantastical. Um, so an interesting component there, when we're talking about haunted houses, and Leonard Pickel, one of his greatest arguments is that all haunted houses, if they want to be successful, need to diversify into screen parks so that they can have more appeal, more perceived value, all that. Um, and I think one of the best things that a screen park owner can strive for is to have haunts not only with different types, so a 3D haunt, a blackout haunt, an outdoor haunt, a traditional indoor, not only with different themes, but also with different tones to appeal to different kinds of people. And that's the best way that we're going to capture the most audience with it. All right, so I think that just about does it for this lesson. Um, let me know what you guys think of this. I'll hopefully keep doing it if you guys like it, but if it gets too boring, let me know that too, and I'll speed it up in the next lessons. But um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy, and happy haunting.